Some modifications and activities discussed in this podcast should not be attempted or recreated. Make sure to keep the mods legal and obey the laws of the road and keep routine the hedges. Well guys, how's it going? Welcome to the Limit the Slip Differences podcast. podcast where we talk about all the local things in car scene as well as a lot of bits about farming. And as well about sometimes with lorries. We got lorries. We got lorries last week. We finally did. Got, got lorries last week. week. Yes, I still can't get this intro right. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we're we on episode five. We are in episode. This is episode five. This is mad. Jesus, red. I'm still no better at this carry on. But anyway, no. sure. It's all about crack. Um. So anyway, uh, I'm Connor, and this is... Michael. Hello, what's the story? Um, and I suppose whenever this podcast comes out, we'll be sort of coming in around the time that Dubshed... There'll be no sort of coming in around it at all. We'll be balls deep in Dubshed at this point. It'll be the Sunday morning. So Yes, so Dubshed will be on I'd like today. to say people will be on route, but if you're not probably at Dubshed by about half seven on the Sunday morning, you're probably just going to be sitting parked up on a I for traffic ages. jam for the rest of the day. And this normally reaches around about 10 o'clock or so. Yeah. So while you're cleaning your car, enjoy us talking shite. I'm probably not expecting to go out into the icon and hear ourselves blasting around. No. You never know. You never know. Some well, you never know, is right? stuck on a subwoofer, but <laughs> I... I'd give him a tenner. I sound very loud, so I don't want to hear myself sound any I'd give louder. Him a tenner, like... So, yeah. Um, so, in regards, like, we're talking about Dubshed this, this week... Michael wouldn't be too well this week, so I he's pulling himself together. But dying. I don't know what it is. My, I, like you can probably tell by my throat that I sound pretty rough. Like about dying. No, granted, uh, we've been a bit smarter this week or this time. Are we? Well, it's half nine. And we're starting this. The last time we did it, it was after eleven. Nah, we got finished up round one, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it is even colder. Hence, why I have a hat on this time, and <laughs> you, well, I, I can I see my own breath. Hat, but yeah. I can literally it's steaming out like So uh first of all, Michael. Before we get into it has been a little bit of a soap opera your vehicle trying to get it ready for dub shit. Uh, uh in this in this podcast. How's it going? <laughs> um well Don't like that start. No, I kinda wanna make a public apology to D P D. Because they actually brought my adapters. Oh that oh they did? Yeah, hence what's on the car. So I wasn't smart enough to figure I, that out. So um, this isn't supposed to be a DVD or me hitting parcel delivery companies podcast, but it seems to be going <laughs> that way. We had parcel force not that long ago, and now we've got DVD. But basically, um, I bought a set of adapters, not adapters, spacers, twenty five mil spacers last week. Yeah, and um, they got lost. Well, first of all, uh. I got an order, a message saying that they hadn't been picked, like they weren't available for collection. And the guy I was buying the adapters off, I know him anyway, he's a guy, Ryan Mullard, has a fucking savage Granada drift car. That would have to be a Granada, wouldn't this it? Thing is, no, but this thing is cool. Like, it just doesn't even look like a Granada anymore. I, I'd it's like been to on axle stands longer than my own car. So has it worked yet? No. Oh, okay. Um, you and him have something in common. Very much so. Um, so Ryan said, "Look, I have these wheels, like these adapters, or spacers. Get it right third time. I don't need them anymore. Um, I'll sell them to you." And I was like, "Right, happy days. They're hitching ours, so really good. Oh, they're, oh, they're very yeah, good. Really ones good then, quality. Yeah. Um, done me a decent solid on them, so I was happy enough with that. So anyway, I arranged to get them picked up last Tuesday. Yeah, and then got a message through saying they weren't available for collection. I sent it to Ryan and goes, "What's going on here?" Like, and he went. Chief, they're literally sitting here and took a picture and goes, they're still here, like. Yeah. And then, so I rung them up and I was like, what the hell's going on here? And uh, they're like, oh, um, it wasn't available for collection. And I was like, I'm literally in contact with the sender. I was like, I know for a fact it's there. And they were like, uh, well, let's look into it. And then they wrote back saying, oh, the driver turns out got a flat wheel and put it through his, like, person didn't arrive he fucked up yeah so just to let him get away so then it was supposed to be arranged for collection on the Wednesday but they didn't transfer the numbers over so if you go on the tracking it would keep telling you my item wasn't picked up by the sender okay yeah or sorry it wasn't picked up by the the driver right but it was left it from Ryan's at like 4 o'clock on the Wednesday but the tracking 
would insist on it. I kept trying to ring part or DPD. I was like trying to chase up, and then finally got through to someone, and they said, "Oh, it hasn't been scanned in seventy two hours. Your package is lost." And I was like, hey, "You're saying that with quite a lot of confidence there." And he was like, "Yeah, look, if it's not if it's not scanned the depot within seventy two hours, like it's it's lost." Yeah. So I was like, "Right, okay." So then next thing, I started going trying to put a claim in and all this here and been down the same route we've been before and um then it they ended up arriving today and I feel kinda bad. But at the same time also it's a week later. Like, you know, it's supposed to be there on Friday, but You have them. I have them. Yeah. That you have them. I have them. And then they were originally supposed to be spacers I have were originally supposed to be for the rear. Okay. And I was only gonna put like like five mil or ten mil on the front. But they work now. Well the thing is when I put the spacers in the front and then realised if I put a little bit more camber in it works it looks 10 million times nicer than what I ever would have had with like a 10 mil spacer so what do you do with the rear camber. then? I need to buy more spacers <laughs> <laughs> but it just tells me now I can take like a, a 9.5 up front so if I want to run static I can run 9.5 all day long up front which most depending I suppose on ET well that's that'd be ET that'd be 9.5 ET15 so I could run 9.5 ET30 pretty easily. So what you're saying is you got your spacers and your car is a bit closer then. Yeah. So having like all the adjustability with like the front arms and the camber strip tops made life pretty easy. Once the spacers were on all I did was get a well, it's not about here but basically a big crowbar loosen the strut top um, like the strut top bearing and just got a big crowbar and just started like <laughs> <laughs> just to put the camber the camber the strut top on the bliss. And uh, if I do get the crowbar out, it worked. So other than that, um, you're not rush at all. <laughs> what else? Uh, brakes. So did you brake us there? Yeah. Do you have brakes now? Uh no. So yes, I have the caliber. Oh. Um, I have the lines. I'll have the discs in a couple of days. So. What happened there was I bought these discs and seen that they'd been forged stud redrilled the five stud. I never entered into my head at that time, even though I know normally know stuff like this, that most forge are five by one oh eight. If they're not four by one oh eight, they're five by one eight. Granadas are rare in the fact that they're five by one one two. I don't want to get techni- too technical here, but five by one one two is more of a VW fitment than a Oh than of course, a yeah, no, of course, yeah. So I seen the rate disc and like I got the calibers and all that for really good money. I think I've probably said that two or three times in this podcast now. Yeah, of course. And uh, so got the discs and was like, then put them on and saying, hold on, the center point's the same on both of these. And then I just realized these are Mondeo discs and not for a Granada. So got on the MTAC and just was like, can you give me a set of Granada discs or a set of Mondeo discs, but redrill the uh, hubs to Granada? And they were like, yeah, they don't. Deadly. So I got a set like. Hopefully they don't get lost. Well, they're coming from like, Eglinton. Is that where MTAC yeah, is? Yeah, that's where MTAC is. Oh, then you're grand. Sure, you could drive up and get them guaranteed. Uh, I could do it. You got ten percent discount if they sent them out and it was free delivery. They just mustn't want the football in the office. Fair enough. Fair you enough. Right. Yeah, on fair enough. If people's not landing and going, where's my brakes? True. Yeah, the you whole would. time. So, Especially with you, you talk shit. I'm not shy for that, though. No. Yeah, well, that would probably just keep them back. But well, I'm still waiting on Man Let Man Fold to get sorted. And uh, pretty much just kind of waiting for all the pieces to arrive so I can kind of piece it all together and pretty much and have it ready. Once again, the wheels are going to Cobra Customs as well now here. And you got into dub shit. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, got into dub shit. Yeah. I probably would have maybe still went ahead with the work and done it all just to prove a point even if I didn't and part of me was kind of expecting not to get inside because like, don't get me wrong I when was the last time they would have literally have had a Ford Sierra inside at Dubshed don't know they had a Capri Twin Turbo last year I but I'm talking about Ford Sierra but it's just if they had some crazy like that they might go well we don't really need any more Fords is it inside this year I don't know there you go I'll soon find out but so like I was just thinking it might not make it, but um, it's in. The new wheels are on. Uh, well, I sh- trying to make them work here. Different compared to what I was running, but 
People might like it, people might not like it. Who the fuck cares? Do you like it? Yes, I think it's class. Oh, well, then you're alright. Personally, right. like, um, but anyway, enough about me and I gossip with your car. I got a new number plate. What'd you and, get? uh, oh, well, it's a Civic, it's a Type R. So what? It's got a K20 oh, K- K- yeah. something? Yeah, I'm, I'm cool course, now. Of course it is. I'm, K- it is. I'm cool now, so, uh, K20 MGO, so K20 Magoo. Ah, so your Golf C6 MGO, MGO isn't it? So I've now got C6 MGO and K20 MGO. Was your plate expensive? I don't know. It was a present. Ah. Uh, yeah. So um, I, I think K20 K20 cheap plates aren't cheap. To I don't. I, to, to tell you, I don't actually know. Feel kind of bad, but uh, um, because maybe you haven't spent as much money <laughs> on Gemma as uh, <laughs> as she has new. But uh, well, no. To be fair, uh. Thankfully, no, she was good enough to me, Gemma, and she got me the C6 MGO for birthday, and got me K20 for Christmas, so... What's she going to buy you for presents now? She can't buy you a number plate. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is she going to buy me? They're, they're, they're good presents to get, to be fair. Uh, maybe coin over or something like that. <laughs> um, Shout out to Gemma, if you can hear us. <laughs> Does he fade on slightly for them things? Uh, um... No, uh, funny the day there it you know changed that like it's I can mm-hmm. put it on now. So if you're not too cold and you're not dead later on, maybe just stick it on. Because you know what, I have stickies. <laughs> Do the stickies react in cold? I don't fucking know. <laughs> there is that. Um, no, I haven't a clue. Well, it, we get the email to say you can put it in your car, but it's not. Get her hand on the fuck. Aye, right. nah, be grand. Uh, normally it takes a day or two anyway for to update and the other systems and that. But I know, uh, play it in the car and probably going to take the car out shortly. Um, just because church sure, getting at that time of the year. Well, the port's on this weekend, which is what we talked about in last week's podcast. Or the last podcast that I just So it's going to be on, on this Sunday. So if anybody sees a Cosmic Grey Type R, Connors, but. Next to them, like with K twenty MGO on it. All oh, right, well, there's, we're just gonna say there's plenty of K twenty on them too. Like, but yeah, yeah, K twenty MGO on a cosmic grey type R. Put a water balloon through his window, please. Thank you. <laughs> you're a cheeky <laughs> bastard. You're you're terrible. No, that's tell you. You're a fucker. You know. <laughs> Did you ever? I know. I know. We just if he to- appears in the Sierra at any point in time at the port, just say <laughs> she's fit to break your hobby slot. <laughs> So not even I wouldn't even get there stay or something in the way but anyway you likely have to post it and it'll be lost what's the discussion on this week's podcast Connor? so uh, with Dubshed being on today when this comes out yes so um, as as I said earlier it's around 10 o'clock or so these come out so yes you probably will be cleaning your car or midway washing it or that or Doing if your missus is in beside you basically so throw it on and, <laughs> and and have a wee uh, so you've done a wee bit of research Michael um, on Dubshed well I say I've done a bit of research um, a, it's not hard to find out because all I did was go to Reload shout out to Reload yes uh, their podcast that's GTINA guys so it's Connor McCann Nigel Lamont and yes, of uh, Lee Maxwell so obviously the bike they, they run Dubshed and then on that particular uh, episode they had Gethin on. Yeah. So he's a, like one of the main men in GTA. I want one of the ones that runs yeah, Dubshed there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, thought, well, probably no better place to listen to. And good podcast as well, to be fair. Oh, I know. In general, definitely. like, just, yes. just good podcasts in general to listen to. Uh-huh. So, um, thought, yeah. Wrote to Connor, actually, um, and said, here, do you fancy giving me a bit of a rundown and I kind of want to discuss it in the podcast if you don't mind and Connor was like you're probably better just listening to the podcast because we go through it in a lot of detail and uh, it's like those guys like Gethin and Nigel remember far more than I can tell you here now and I was like that's a really good idea so from that podcast then what did you learn when did Dubshed start so I'm not going to bastardize their their podcast um, because you can go listen to it but to basically summarize it up I'll we'll talk and probably go off in about 100,000 different tangents as we do um, but yeah basically the first Dubshed started in 2010 and more or less it was a case of the GTA and I guys 
the reason why it started or and why it is so early in the year was back then uh, there actually wasn't anything really until the summer. You know when the kids got out of school. Ah, uh, yeah, of uh, course. So, and the first show of the year back then would actually have been Castle Well. Oh, yeah. So July that's time July. Well. Started July. So there was big, I suppose, corporate shows run back then, but not really maybe the style that the GTA and I guys were going for. So not modified car shows. Well, it would have been. You know, you had like uh, modified live, I think, and you had a uh, heat wave and stuff like that, but. I suppose GTA and I were a car club running a car show rather than a company running a car show. If that makes sense. Oh no, of course. So it was started in 2010 and 2010 in the Kings Hall. And fun fact for all the Agri boys in here, including me and you, because I thought this was class. Their first stage was two A for William Trillers, part back to back. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking cool is that? Like, I think sometimes, like especially now, people go, "Oh, dub shit boys, dub shit boys, scene boys, scene boys," when they can't talk about anybody that has a stance car. But it's worth noting that like a few of them are from farming backgrounds too, and like that's class. Like <laughs> the the trailers together, and the first the for the first year it was in the same shed as were the cattle. If we ever had to do a show, Bill Triller, Bill Triller, <laughs> Bill Fraser, um, I heard knocked out and still hooked up to the one ten ninety. <laughs> we don't talk about Bill Trillers and and UK. if we ever have to ferry people, sure. Do what they do in the south, get a, a feeding tiller, or just Aye. I I'll draw them yeah. down the mass. They do that. They do not do that in Clarkson's farm as well. It maybe wasn't a feeding tiller; it was maybe a proper tiller. That's what they do in the if it's if I'm thinking right in the ploughing on the time I was at the yeah they do. FTF or the farm machinery demos not there down. Oh, uh, can't mind where it was, but it was like I know they do it for the sellers coming and that yeah yeah, and it was all three feeding trillers. That's class. That's <laughs> deadly. I love that. But um, no, so. The first year, it was actually in the same shed that they used to have the cows in. Oh. At the King's Hall. Oh, So, yeah. it started off in the King's Hall, and um, I think the first year, there was 160 cars, and this was back in a time when, I was going to say people didn't have internet, like they would have had <laughs> fucking 2010, like, but social media, like, Facebook wouldn't have been a thing back then, you'd maybe just, maybe just about still had Bebo. Bebo, I was about to say Bebo. So, I Bebo was kind of what oh six oh seven sort of thing. Till prime, probably Back about in the day, ten, like, like top sixteen friends, top sixteen or half. I came into my head the other day, <laughs> Bebo, um, like and all just the weird and wonderful flash, but or flash boxes. So like normally, mine's was tended to consist of like some video of like you no know, remember all like the. The really max power modified cars you used to get, like the 206 Cleo, and then the it used yes. to be that effect where the, the the scene changed from like blue, green, yellow, red, <laughs> like and, and it was just like DJ Potty's game of love or something, like playing or like, DJ Cami in the mix. Oh, deadly! Or even uh, Jermaine used to get the the poster. We all like the car, the pure done up cars, like the max power Astra and all that, cartoonified. <laughs> Have you got that still? <laughs> Well, I didn't expect that, now I have to say. Two hours later. Imagine talking about dub shit and then we start to talk about people like, how fucking mad are we? And he's left the door open and I am fucking foundered. Eight hours later. When Michael sees us, you're a fucking wanker for leaving that door open. 48 hours later. Oh, he's coming back, he's coming back, he's coming back. One eternity later. <laughs> well, <laughs> main the one that was cartoonified. But yes, that's I also had that poster as well. Do you want to know something though? <laughs> do you want to know, oh, know something though? Fat. Yes. Back in that time, we were kind of just too young. And Max Purr always had a really bad section that your mother didn't want you to see. Do you know that come up actually on Oh you're dying sir Another podcast recently as well I can't remember which one I think it was actually the two Johnnies Oh And they said at the same time that car magazines Like used to always have Like especially car magazines Ladies to, Yeah At the back <laughs> Like I used to I read Redline When I was younger Yeah It wasn't so bad Because it was pretty performance But like fast car Well Like fast car back Before 
Max Power. Max Power is even worse. Really bad. Oh, like, like <laughs> kind of a girl a bit chavy, weren't they? But do you ever mind? You were maybe going for groceries with your mother, and you happen to see, uh, and you were like maybe looking at the Max Power magazine, and you're like, "Oh, that's pure deadly." And, and then, then you your mum was like, the page. <laughs> and, then, "And then your mum was like, get away from that filth." No, like I, I think, um, I think I pretty, pretty much had to just promise my mum whenever I got red line that I just wouldn't look at any <laughs> of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, um, it was, it was like, uh, it's like. No, or you'd just be reading it and you'd just suddenly see something you just go <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we are way off topic um, to Well, from Bebo to, yeah. to Redline Max Power. So, what they actually did was uh, they done it on forums So, they, they made an interesting point I oh. really mean sounds was like the forum back in the day Apparently, it's quite big again now I'm not on it. Probably forums, should be. but are they not? They're not. Well, probably not dead old yeller, but they're not like fairly. They are like they're an old technology now. Like, um, but they actually made a valid point on the, the Reload podcast. They said like forums were kind of like a pre Instagram. I I like to be fair. The one thing I will say about forums was whenever you did come up on them, so so helpful. If you right, if you Google anything to do with your car, or you can't think, or you can't figure out what's wrong, and Google it. It's always a forum. It's always in a forum. Nowadays, you can, like, if you find an owner's club on Facebook and you Google the problem, you'll but find it on Facebook. Totally but another thing Facebook took a large percentage oh, away from. Oh, yeah, yeah. Killed forums. Killed forums completely. But like, you were fit to, that was the only thing I was meant to say, but you were fit to say the likes of Michael, uh, your forum be brief and long all the same. But back in the day, you would put it up about your Sierra and the engine swap and all that yeah, yeah. on the forum. But people would be fit to just go on to that instead of going on to Facebook and Instagram. And well, scrolling that's through, essentially what it was. That shite, was like, you know, that was like old school social media. Um, and they made a valid point. Like nowadays, you would know people by their Instagram handle. So there's you definitely do. Well, yeah, but like you know, like take Calvin Kirby for example. You'll go there's Calvin IS four hundred. If you didn't know his actual name, like that's what you would say. Oh, that's Calvin IS four hundred's car. Yes, for example. Well, you would have done the same with oh, th- their blah blah on reload. Or on on RMS yeah, yeah. podcast. Oh my god, I'm not well. The only thing is, uh, I I I wouldn't because I couldn't even remember my Instagram in the first <laughs> podcast. No, you you wouldn't remember it too well. I'm so. just a different breed. Right, say that again. <laughs> and uh, so then from there, uh, they said that back then they were like literally handing out like handing out flyers. Just shows you how like far we've come. Ins- like Instagram and Facebook and that have been yeah. detrimental in some ways but by god they've helped yeah. in other ways so big time the first year there's 160 cars in the first year and 100 uh, sorry 600 people I think through the doors okay um, sec- the second year was then because of the limited space they had they uh, moved then to uh, email so you emailed them to get your car approved yeah and then I think that year they had 240 cars and then as time moved on, so you, you got in. Obviously, it's got bigger and bigger, changed location, etc. We'll get to that yeah. in a bit. But do you remember Dubshed? Were you ever at Dubshed when it was in the King's Hall? So I my first time was 2014. Yeah, um, that was my first, first so time well. So we had... Uh, so Conla back in the day was changing his wheels, and I sort of begged him because Mark for Golf and Polos are... Well, 9 and 3 Polos is what mine was, are both 5 by 100. Yes. And I was like, oh, sure, we, we, you know, we were all up in your other shed, and we were just like, you know, for back crack, we'll stick them in your polo, you know, to see what they're like. Did you take them? Did you so take I the borrowed the, I borrowed the Shiragos for that weekend. Did you? Yeah, I have photos. I know I, you I, borrowed them We'll insert a photo of what my polo looked like. I a standard you, polo on 18 inch Shiragos. It's hilariously high looking. I know you borrowed them for Car Culture Life. <laughs> borrowed them, but I coiled over to that stage. Oh, yes. right, right, so, right. Uh, um... So that was first year, though I didn't show because I had oh, the car lowered to that. No, I just uh, drove up, you know. You just drove up. Um, That's why. Distinctively, main walking in and seeing Finbar Duffin's blue van at the time. Was class back that in the was, day. Thing was class back was in the day. Like, it was really cool. Like, um, I can't. I couldn't mind any other cars, but I can, I can mind seeing his car around like two in that because yeah. he was driving it and the fact he had a diesel bowser, I think it was a diesel bowser yeah, he used to. on it. And I mean, like, the diesel bowser was, I think the back wheel was nearly up off the ground because well, she was that low. I, you heard stories that he used to, like, lower the car 
like pull pull the car up on the ramp on like a Friday and lower it, and then like he'd raise it up again on like the Monday. That's probably bold. Uh, like, well, I think he just drove decked everywhere. Like. Um, well, the time, uh, like even being like in film station, money glass or that, you would do all the time seeing him. And I think he had Porsche tip twin twin exo- yeah, twin exhaust did, uh, Porsche tips. Yeah. yeah, that thing. Look, was the first caddy I can remember that was, that was cool properly. Yeah, like, no, him and Wes's or ha- Wes's as Wes's. well. Like that, they had went all out. and yeah. done up a cat. You know, done yeah. up a caddy, but um, and I can mind just going into the show, and it was. You could say for a first show to ever be too now, well, not the first one, but one of the first to ever go myself because I went with my brother to a couple, like yeah, modified live. Um, and oh, what did you call them? The three twin cams, and they had we the oh, what oh did you call them? not the fast, no, the the, the three twin cams, and yeah. they had like a they the were just blue, different, the, the blue one, the white one, and the burgundy one, yes, they didn't corner one of them boys. Oh, don't know, fast, don't know. fast and light, fast and light. No, I'll come to us straight after. We we stop recording yes. that's all come to us. Um but first show went into myself and the standard of cars whenever you have not been around that or seen that was unreal. Oh yeah. Unreal. Absolutely. And the thing is, uh like that's that dubshed twenty fourteen was my first ever dubshed as well. And that was so that was the year Gavin had the stand and Ended up my two oh seven was on that stand, so it was on the hydraulics and the three SDMs. So we were on Gavin's stand, he had six cars and um I remember like first time ever being at that bike show driving through the King's Hall and like I remember it was that was still when it was like pretty much like no well, there was no pretty much about it. That was back when it had to just be a, a Volkswagen, car. yeah, Volkswagen. And but if it was a stand, obviously it was it was different, but um and I can remember driving through the hall at the time going, oh, look at me and my Peugeot, all these boys are going to be like, oh, look at him. But the reality is, no one would have cared one but like, no one uh, would have give a fuck. But I, They probably went, why did you... Why has that boy got really small wheels in that 207? And hydraulics. Oh, why would you do that? Yeah, probably. But I remember that, so that was like my first time, and there was the two sheds, there was the main shed, and then there was the other smaller shed. Yes. Um, And... Like, to be honest, like, that whole thing of being indoors, like, really, like, it kind of sets the scene for what pretty much anybody, like, if anybody in this country has ever wanted to run a show, like, dub The benchmark is... Dub is the benchmark. No, no ifs, no buts, no questions asked. Like, dub shed is the benchmark. To be fair, one thing, though, on it, like, I suppose now it's changed venues and it's on yeah. the icon or yeah. down where the Balmore show is. But there's nowhere really else like that where you could have a show where a large indoor shed, unless you're going to have a show on a farm and the man, uh, you know, just I before the silage goes in. But how big a farm would you need for that? Like, a um, pretty big one. Like, to be fair, my silage pack could have a few cars. I would not. 150 a haul or something. Like, not at all, no. Like, well, I don't know how many cars be inside a dub shed, to be fair, but. um, There's not I, like s- seven or eight hundred or something out there could, goes to it now. Uh, maybe between inside and outside, I'm not sure. But um, I know then was it was there twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen they moved to the icon because I can't remember off the, I w- I was convinced it was twenty sixteen but I think in the podcast twenty sixteen because in twenty fifteen did you not go up I in, me I you were away or I something. think I was in Dublin that weekend and then you I, came up and I drove I met you, you home. in the Sunday yeah. yes and then we went and got food or something yes and I left you home yeah because I had just literally the polo with the with the you, wheels and all so you had the C Star fives on at that stage yes and everybody went by going oh lad you've got a set of Apollo that's right because they were like the money Apollo so I I remember that then as well so um I I thought. I thought they, were, they had done it in 2015, but I thought by the way they like, talked... Shout out to Owen McGuire, he buffed the car, or no, sorry, he, he polished the car before that, whenever we were like getting it ready that, oh, seriously? that evening, and the colour changed, because <laughs> it had never been polished. Uh, probably, it probably would have preferred... It, dar- it darkened it quite a lot. I yeah. know, fair play to Owen. Um, uh, he'll definitely have a couple of cool cars at Dubshed this year. Uh, he phased away from the D turbos and that years ago, and now he's he doesn't. Yeah, I, I maybe give him a bit of a wind up about this actually, because he used to be such a big D turbo man, and now if you're speaking to him, he's like, "Ugh, uh, French scraps." Like, fuck up, Owen. You loved D turbos for a long time, but mind the white sedan. Yeah, it was class. hydraulics. Yeah, it was, it was deadly. deadly. It was class. Um, on the Borbits. Um, and then it moved to 2016. It moved to the Icon. And I'm yes. not going to say I don't want to turn around and slate it, 
but I'd say there was probably a lot of learnings for the Dubshed guys even for that year just with because obviously they would have known the Kings Hall so well and then you move to a completely new, different venue but you get a sh- it's not like they're starting off with a small crowd again yeah like, they're getting probably more people than ever and I would say they were probably promised a few things by the council at that time if you listen in the podcast they'll say that they were told oh there'll be slipways off the motorway to this place and there's going to be hotels and yeah and like no that's still there like no of course no I know what you mean well I can mean that well I was at it that first year I was at it um, or was at the Icon but it nearly seemed like the venue was like yes for the Balmoral show because it was such a much bigger venue yeah but because obviously with it being the city, you know a car show and the size of it was and it was still like obviously you know it was finding its feet in a new location the location was massive yeah huge and it nearly took something away from the show because the, the venue was I, so big I think big. it's just because we all assumed there was just so much character with the King's Hall like, like the, you know because we also should fill the King's Hall yeah and then it came to the icon and like then just a big wide open space and like you know it didn't matter how many cars you had outside yeah, you could have just, fit it you know like a couple of thousand yeah it just it, it, it yeah it just it took I, I think and I'd say if you were talking to Connor you were to turn around and ask Connor and Angel that question now they'd probably agree they'd say yeah like it was tough at that time and then was it 2016 it was 2016 then was the first year that they allowed I Love Bass to do the top 25 so they had this they had their own wee separate hall and they yeah. could have anything they wanted in it so and I think Crest, Crest Van was in it Yes, and Brad's Brad's BM, BM was there, and then uh, there was that one, of the Col- one of the Coleman's yes. S fifteen was on it. Yes, um, main the uh, the v- is it the Arista was the big VIP yeah, the, York. It was a two JZ, was it not? I have no idea. But uh, I did, Aristo, I was, big wide body Aristo. Um and I think to be honest, and if you're talking to the, the if you or not if you're talking, but if you listen to the 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 podcast, like this is kind of where they start talking about. This is when they bring like start talking about bringing in like other models because before then like it was only VWs but to be honest like would you say just sorry I've forgotten Anne, but would you say that the King's Hall had room and they had enough good quality Volkswagen cars to fill that and then they come to this massive place and there's not as many like you wouldn't have the number of like high quality Volkswagen and all that air builds that to fill it so then you move on and you let other ones in to make it like a more inclusive show uh, not really because if you look at and I was thinking about this earlier actually like if you look at how the scenes changed like back in the day with the exception of me who had Project Failure Bora like all the gang was running about with, with bag cars like back then that was what the scene wanted that was like that was, that, suppose that was, what that was like what you had like you if you had to have a VW like true yeah that was the thing and um like that it's when like air started getting popular and like the said really air was more up. popular than before them as soon as finance became available for air I don't want to say that either like but um well it was more affordable for it was more everybody accessible else. so yes. like fair enough I don't want to do the whole off oh, finance bags and wheels thing because whatever but um well if pay, well it's, but yes oh true I don't I don't but I don't want to be seen as running it down no like, no you're not no I wouldn't say it's running it down but like it was making it more accessible for everybody so like no matter who you were, if you wanted to have bags and your thing, but it was because maybe some people before that, before the finance became available, they had to graft for their two and a half, three thousand pounds. Oh yeah. Of and course. then somebody comes along and it's like, oh, I'm eighteen, and you know, I'm fit to afford it through finance. Yeah. Then I suppose that would trigger some people. Live on cheese for the rest of the month, like um, but like back then, for instance, like that was really when you know the dub scene, as I would call it, really was the movement away from you know fast like sort of fast and furious kind of max power sort of stuff really mad shit it was nice and clean no AM plus nice clean low like and that really transitioned and in my head like that kind of transition is nicely into the scene what we have now where it's where it's like you know you've got all the Japanese cars and you've got mad body kits would you say that but you've still got fitment not like there's still fitment and people on air and you know would you not say even suppose some of the JDM stuff that it, to begin with it um, like people were say bagging them or putting them in coilovers but like you know just the, the way they were standard was set in nice wheels and then now drifting's got so much more popular here and that's and definitely Hot Boy as you talk yeah. about like your own car but like Hot like, I suppose the drifting and the drift games and all that there um, 
that now than the craze you have now like that I suppose that whole thing and the whole clout behind it I guess would have been more towards Dubshed and all those back in the day like, well here's another question I suppose with Drifting becoming more popular do you think possibly that you know right you can say this here so your Vicar right now it's kind of different but yeah a few years ago Vicar you have your say your um, air or static you have like your one track pony it looks good but, and then you can lower it down to the ground then JDM stuff comes around turbo flutter limiter you can put her sideways she looks good regardless you can drift her take her to you know different things and they've like more tricks up their sleeve I think and then people's got more accustomed to that and then now one's growing up now obviously your AST 100's and that you know everybody you know that's what the young couple looks at now and care instead of the twin cams and that whenever we were sort of growing up possibly I mean if you talk to any of the I'm sure the GTA and I guys or any of the boys it's like you know kind of that generation above us they'll tell you they had probably the best fun in their lives driving about in Mark 2 and Mark 3 golfs so oh no they are they, they are dead you know right? they, they'll tell you that and you know, it's worth noting as well that whenever, like, the dub scene was probably at its strongest, say, 2014, 2015, 2016, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, You know, that's back when rear-wheel drive cars, like, 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 even, like, Lexus's were £800, Sierra's were £1,500. Because nobody really bothered nobody with wanted them. them. You know, it, and they just, at the time, there just wasn't that shift. It was like, I want my VW, like, Golf to have a shaved bay, and I'm gonna do that because that's what I want. And fair play, but I I think a lot of it come down to, um, it just got very very hard and very very expensive and very very difficult to kind of be different. I think within that scene. Well, here's one thing about show cars. I found, or I think anyway, that say regard. So say the likes of you're building your car right, and you get to you know, you you air static, hydraulics, whatever way you want down you get a certain look and you're like no that's, uh, you know, we're really happy with that it comes next year what are you, what are are you, are do? you actually doing something just for the sake of doing it to be different? Now there is some people that's fit to put more money in and you know, change bits and it looks better mm. then you start seeing people like le- like doing like leathering their dash you know, and for the it. sake of doing it yeah, and full leather steering wheel and all the pillars and the roof and all full leather and or full suede or whatever and but that the thing is people were doing that back then people aren't doing that now but that's not to say people aren't doing other kind of crazy things now but then would people not be going for more like down the pirate pirate possibly um i i don't know like i, I think if, if a car from 2015 was to roll into a show now like we'd be looking at that and going holy shit that's class but i think back at that stage there was nearly a lot of people doing it and I think it kind of sort of made like the fact that people were going to these and seeing lengths it kind of nearly you know I don't I don't want to say this in an insulting way but I don't want to say it becomes boring but when you just see oh there's a Mark 3 Leon with full leather inside oh there's a Mark 6 Golf full leather inside there's a Mark 2 Golf full leather inside okay everyone's doing full leather inside you know and you're looking at it and going like yes that's class but after a while it's like okay everybody's doing this you now, know because everybody's just having to go that extra level and that extra level and that extra level to be fair there is some cool stuff that happens I've seen what a Mark 2 Golf with a Mark 4 Golf and like dash in it yeah and I thought I was like holy shit that's deadly well one of my favourite cars ever to grace Dubshed was the Mark 2 Jetta with the PD-130 engine like shit like that there's cool yeah oh yeah but like uh, to be fair, like as I say, like all the old dub stuff that you see, like you're not old dub stuff, but like stuff that would have been really big back in the day, if that was to come forward now, like you'd be like, that's fucking class because be, no one's doing it now. To be fair, now for the masses, the likes of doing your, you know, your vag stuff, you know, I have seen like a lot of you know young fellas now. It, like seems to be the Mark IV Golf and the Bora, yeah, is like the new D Turbo in yeah. a sense because. You know, you get your pop and bang map. Ricky, you know, Ricky map not a scary you. amount of money, and you can put them out a good break. Jeez, they're getting dear now. Well, like you know, two thirty, two forty break is sort of. Oh, I thought you meant buying the car themselves. Oh no, buying like, the car themselves, very dear now. Oh well, true, yes, but they're seen as cool, and it's not as if they're going on a set of Vmans or that. Quite a lot of them, it's like Long Beaches, Bora Sports on wee wee and wee tires, uh, and them starting on, air. on the air. ground. A lot of boys are going air, and as like well. it nearly seems to be like really OEM yeah. or even and 
like I suppose you'd say dub sheds because it's moved to that bigger place well like inside or not it's irrelevant if they like their car but you know all them lads can go and drive and show off their yeah, car yeah and I think they should like, oh totally I, like I think the whole idea of dub shed and you're talking to if you even listen to the podcast that's what a lot of them guys are saying is like you can bring your car like the whole idea yes your car not may not be inside because the whole idea of inside is show cars but if you own a VW or no it's just anything if you own a VW like you can go, you can go and that was kind of the magic of it you know you could go and as long as you got up early enough in the morning it didn't matter what VW you drove oh, you were still you were you, get in. You, were, you were able to get in and park outside and now, you're always going to get somebody to be like oh you know you have, that's very little done to you this is that stuff but, but if you like your car is my cat interfering is Mitten's going to come in and say hello cat what do you want Something tells me if I put that in, it's not going to go as well as the Alexis video. Um, but I cater her interruption this week. So uh, I've probably had to do a bit of editing there because my cat decided to come in and I felt bad that she was outside. And uh, But then when I went to open the door, she kind of just looked at us and <laughs> walked out. And Fuck it! Kind of feel like that's the same opinion probably most people have with us <laughs> at this point. Like So, um, yeah. But like yeah, back then, as we were saying, it was the type of thing, you know, you could just go in and as you say as long as you got up early enough in the morning I think that was part of the magic of it was getting up because it was the first show or of here, the year we're here here convoys now yeah. have we bit of a story so uh, what was it I can't remember what year it was I think it was maybe 2017 20s. or something maybe 2017 can't remember no but I think it was 2016 me uh, me Calvin and Lee Adam was with us as well wasn't he in the Lexus. No, you weren't with you. I was in you, wasn't it? I don't know. I was in you. Maybe. Are you aware? Oh, there you go. I was in you. Um, no, you're mates. But the, <laughs> the three of us were driving the cars anyway, and um, Lee was tailing me, and I was tailing Calvin, like we were driving stupidly close together, going down uh, near to York Gate on the way to the West Link. Was it not Sprucefield? No. Oh, was it York Gate? Yes. Right. You're fact right, lad. Know your friends. <laughs> Anyway, so yes, um, then we seen a police car, and then it blew into us, and I was like, shit, and I went in behind Lee, and Lee went over across, I was like, oh, he's after him, <laughs> drive on, <laughs> okay, and no, you're yeah, <laughs> <laughs> terrible of me, <laughs> I was like, ah. but uh, yeah, no, so Lee just got told off for telling me, and he said, oh, I'd, pu- I'd pull your friend over only, obviously, I can only pull you, because he's not going to pull over if I'm pulling you over so um, he arrived anyway about 15 minutes later to the show than what we did and just said that he just told him you know I understand there's a show on but stop driving like a you know like a fucker yeah I was actually I remember one time we were all driving to Bangor for a show and uh, I can't mind if you were with me it was 2014 Shorks in the multi story car park no it wasn't no and uh, the police like we were there's about ten of us and a big convoy together and the police like drove by us all really, really slowly and then like pulled in the person at the end and just said, Why are you all driving like dicks? Because we were all driving so close together. I didn't even realise we were driving that close together. Yeah. Um, but we were. Speaking of convoys, the best ever convoy, main car culture live twenty fourteen. Fourteen. 60. Fifty-five no six sixty four cars. Sixty four cars left Marafeld. No, I think it was something like forty something left Marafeld. We filled the BCP. And then by the time we because we went out uh, Coleraine over the mountain rather going than, like rather than going like uh, out by Kilray and Garva and Balearn even though to be honest Adam like, Cooper others, stopping the traffic in Maharada, <laughs> in Maharada and everybody through and then he he, uh, he videoed it that was actually deadly that I'd was not, classic it'd be classy you get that video again uh, it, it was unreal um, but I, I can mind us doing that yeah we went by Coleraine instead of going by uh, out by the, like over the mountain. Even in the mountain would have been absolutely dead on road. Yeah. But um, we were meeting ones then in Coleraine as well. So like I can just remember coming down Lima Valley Mountain and just looking behind me, and there was this massive convoy of cars. That was on the road. It's just like that's deadly. Like to be fair, I miss uh, those days. True or not true? For us, the best part of the show was the convoy there and back. Yeah, the drive up, hundred percent. Absolutely. No used- illegal activities are done all the same. <sighs> no, not at all. Um I can like I can mind like 
that was the most fun was getting in your car and driving to the place to meet everybody oh, totally, and then yes. like everybody sort of stood around for a while and then you're like right everybody let's head I feel like nowadays with kind of like the shows and maybe it's because we've all like the group we run about with maybe all have moved on no I have moved on but well, yeah. I mean, people are all living in different places now, and doesn't make much it's sense. More of a select group going, and it's like we'll just see you in there. Isn't it mad that Michael McGrath drove from Enniskill and Country to Marafelt to meet us to drive to Larne? That was class. That was a cord. That was deadly. But um, the last convoy I actually did that I've had um, was old school, new school on the way back last year. Yeah. And it was in like it was the first time the Sierra I'd, I'd driven the Sierra with a group of people like convoy. Oh yeah, and um, it's the first time in a long time that I'd done that, and it was a really good night. Like the sun was shining, and it's probably one of the best feelings I've ever had. Like um, I can mind us going through like these towns, and like there was people like stopping and looking at us because you had Adam Stewart in the bright yellow Glanza, you'd Simon. In the Civic, you Calvin, Holly, Jack, and Godzilla, uh, Nick, Derek, uh, Chris, and Craig, and me and in a parlor. Hmm. And me in a welcome parlor. Me <laughs> <laughs> in a welcome parlor. I think Cameron and me went on up the road by that stage, but uh, we were driving through the towns and like people were looking at us, we kids and all were looking at us. And I can remember thinking to myself, like, if I was eight year old me, yeah, looking at myself now, I'd be like so proud of me. Because, you know, eight-year-old me would have seen all them cars driving by and would have been like, oh, they're really cool. I wish I could do that. And so on that day, your car was fit to bring happiness. Yeah. <laughs> like, you were, like, that whole thing, you were just like, you know, like, sometimes you just can't need to be thankful. Did we warm feeling in, in the stomach, did Sometimes you? you just can't need to be, like, I'm a bit Mr. Dim and Gloom at times, and sometimes you do. Sometimes. Well, <laughs> um, and sometimes you can't just need to maybe... As you say, pinch yourself and realize, like, oh, it was a, it was a pinch me. moment It was, yeah, hundred percent was a pinch me moment, and um, it was it was just such a nice feeling to be able to do that and have that again because I hadn't, you know, I hadn't driven on a convoy in what, fuck, like, maybe twenty seventeen would have been the last one. Just before we say anything more, do they still have one feature dub shed that would be very controversial now? I was actually going to bring that up, <laughs> so you've just brought that up. Um, because... That's worked well. Scrap a job. <laughs> <laughs> they were scrapping half the fucking car yeah, park. Yeah, they were scrapping half the country at that stage. Um, they got rid of it because I think it was starting to get a bit rash. And I remember when we did the show at uh, the Elk that time. Um, yeah, we we scrapped with my C Max. <laughs> we used my C Max as like the car, and like it just got smashed. Like people were just paying money just to bit the C Max to pieces. Um, if you had anger issues, it was a good way to get it out of you. Well, that's what they were saying. Like, they said, like, this guy, this one particular guy came along, and, uh, you know, like, most people were laughing the sledge and being like, nah. this one guy was lifting it up, like, perfect, perfectly straight, and then, push <laughs> every time, like, and they were just like, Jesus, this man's insane. Like, um, yeah, scrap a job. If you're doing that, you'd be going out and trashing half the cars, as you say. But it brings us on actually kind of nicely then after that. So, stopped doing that the whole, because then it came 2019 and it was Dubshed X and that was the first year that they had it open to everyone yes and if you're actually listening to Connor Connor at the time says in, like, in the podcast he's like I was raging we did this at the time oh yeah because obviously it was a VW show and they're big are they going away from, they're going away from the laurels going away from the roots and um to allow laurels in <laughs> this guy <laughs> um <laughs> And, like, they, you know, but Dubshed needed that to survive. Oh, to, well, like, yeah. As they say, like, they're like, oh, we want people to come, but we also want them to bring their friends. And we also want them, their friends to bring their friends. Oh, of course, you know? yeah. And it's, and then it's like, it's not their fault they drive Japanese cars. <laughs> 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 had to laugh out of it, but it's, but, you know. A lot of Fords at it, too. Yeah, I'll scrap. Anyway, um... <laughs> But it's true, like, uh, they needed that. This, the scene, I think, is a lot more diverse now. And Dubshed would have had to have catered for that. Oh, yeah, totally. Which brings us around nicely to 2023, which is the first time 
I've ever actually applied for Dubshed. <laughs> I've, ne- I've never applied for Dubshed before because I've never had a car ready for Dubshed. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's not ready yet. Well, yeah, true. If I, but I can go, a tra- I can go on a trailer. Like, if I can get, if I can get like the fat man sort it, I can go on a trailer. Um, kind of hoping that doesn't be that because I'm always a big advocate of you should always drive the shows. Um, and fuck being a trailer queen, but kind of want it there. So, oh, totally, yeah, no, totally. And I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really, really good. To be honest, um, anybody that's indoors can go up on the Friday night. Oh, yeah. So, cheers for that. Thank you. <laughs> and um, all right, okay. And uh, so up on the Friday night, it'll be you know everyone will hopefully get up and uh, just get everything kind of cleaned then. But chill, you know. Just can't be people you know knows about. Talk to people. Um, if it's my case, just annoy people. Uh, chat shape. Don't chat get don't shape. get banged. Don't get banged. Just chat more shape. Yeah. Just people be like, oh fuck off, Michael. And then Saturday, get up, clean the car, do it again. And then Sunday, I think I'm actually helping Vicky out in her stand. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um. So. If you're listening, Vicky, which probably won't be, go and give me one of them nice new hoodies. I'll be one too, like. You're not helping. You just want one. Oh, okay, be nice, be nice. But, um, so, we've chatted now for a brief bit about dub shit. Well, how many edits have we had? <laughs> normally we don't, well, I don't, I say this every week, like, normally we don't admit, admit to edits, but, um. Of course we do. Yeah. No, like, I mean, as in, I don't, I wouldn't normally put in that we've edited things. But I think I have pretty much mentioned it in every podcast. So between all the edits, I were coming up rightly. So, Michael. Say, uh, saying 55 minutes there, but it's probably going to be like 35 or something. <laughs> the time I've cut all the bullshit out. Like, Oh, probably, yeah. So, uh, Michael, um, and an interest in this week? A uh, couple of things, actually. The first thing I kind of have wondered and pondered about is um, how the fuck... Did people drive cars from the eighties and eighties in traffic jams? Fuck all people had traffic or had cars in the eighties and nineties to have traffic jams. I wouldn't say that's necessarily true. Like places like people will tell you that getting to Belfast was harder back then than it is now, since they put in the third lane. So there's definitely bound to be um Maybe they sat I don't know, sat further apart. The the reason I ask is uh I um have been driving the P100 as a daily until the last few days when it started snowing. They started laying the ice out in the roads again. Yeah, and um, I was so there was that accident in the motorway the other day. Oh yes, and hopefully, hopefully it's all all well. well. I don't know what I actually don't know what the outcome out of it is, is to be honest. So I don't really want to start saying too much about that. But anyway, um, I thought I'd be smart and try and go by. The somewhat scenic route, so I drove to Balmina instead, and then went out like the Larne Line, and then down and headed to Duke. Ah, uh, yeah. Got the Duke, stuck in traffic at Duke. Oh, stuck there for fifteen twenty months. Got through Duke, out over the long shot, heading towards Bally Robert. Yes. I sat for an hour between the long shot and Bally Robert. And you've no radio in the car. I've no radio. I have a speaker. <laughs> I have a wee Bluetooth speaker But Like I had a sit With the heating on full blast Like yes I know they have fans And stuff like But I had a sit With the heating on, heating on full blast Like Just To make sure She wouldn't start Raising the hand And like Every so often The hand would start to lift And then Thankfully it would go down again But You know like I know A lot of the older cars And especially things That have like Manual pumps Like 306s Lift the hand Sierra's Lift the hand um, I'm sure old Civic, Civic's probably left the hand. More likely, yeah. Like, you know, and I'm just thinking, like, the cooling systems wouldn't maybe have been as good back then. And maybe the fans wouldn't have been as effective. And I just was thinking, like, was there a lot of cars, like, back in the day? Like, if you could stuck in a traffic jam now and, and anything happened. If you drove a BMW? Ah, a 325 or something. You'd well, be screwed. Even a twin cam. Left the hands. You know. And I was just thinking, like, if you're back in the day driving any of them cars, like, how many people boiled sitting in traffic? Because <laughs> in a modern car nowadays, like, the Bora are even, I say modern, it's 20, nearly 20 years old, but, you know, anything modern you wouldn't think twice. 
No, you wouldn't. Like, you'd just be like, oh, I'm sitting here for an hour. But, but at like, the same time, like, if you think about it, right, so most families now, say, they're, they're only having a couple of kids, but say, you know, sort of our, our generation where the, the lot, you know, most families, like, five or six in them. Mm-hmm. But no, most families, them. like, four people in them. You just come from a big family. Well, it comes from a big family. It comes from a big family. But anyway, yeah. Like, every, you know, wasn't that long ago there was only, like, one or two cars per house? Even back whenever they were quite fresh cars, you know, E30s and that. Yeah. But, and then now. What was that? It was an automatic, anyway. So, uh, V8. V8 it sounded like a V8. C63 or something. I think like it made him in a C63. Again, we have been rudely interrupted. <laughs> well, he didn't uh, grace us with a few donuts this time, unfortunately. Dick. But, uh, the audacity. And. But anyway, you were saying. I like nowadays, you know, like every wean turns 17, 18. I have You know, the, the parents are sort of under pressure or like they're dying to get a car. Yeah. So, like, I can't even talk. There's Same. two in my house. No, sorry, three in my house. Mm. There's five cars. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Um, <laughs> you have too many cars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and all of them. Suppose maybe there would have been less cars on the road. Well, um, that's all I'm thinking. What were you going to say? And all of them what? And all of them what? <laughs> <laughs> or from around that maybe era, you know, that would tend to boil. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so, yeah, that was something. I to be fair, they're not boiled with no engine on them. No, they're not boiled with an axle sounds anytime soon. Cavalier. Anyone else you noticed this week, Michael? I'm looking at you, Sarah. I'm looking at you, Sarah. I'm also looking at you. Uh,. Did you see the Drift Games uh, when they were out in, uh, was it Dubai or the Dubai, UAE? yes. Did you see the Bentley Drift car? The Sultan al Qasimi. Yeah. One? They must be doing a proper video or something on it, because um, they, sh- they didn't show a wild pile of it, but it's like a full uh, carbon body. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's money. Oh, yeah. That's, that's L- a lot L- of money. Swap. That's a lot of money. And then he has the Aston Martin, too. That's that's a lot of money too. Well, it's just money. At this but you all know something. It's freaking cool because, in a sense, now I know we slagged Lambos. We didn't slag Lambos. We'd rather chase her over a Lambo. But we're Irish. Yeah. Anyway, it's kind of cool that somebody that has the money, we're like, <laughs> well, that's just e- making Bentley and the drift. Well, that's even. But it's it's quite uh, interesting to see if it's any good. Well, that's even what Drift Games were saying was um. You know, everybody else in the UAE and them regions tends to be like, oh, Ferrari, Ferrari. And, like, Sultan's like a proper, like, petrol head. Like, Just as you enthusiast. say that, right? So, there was a thing, uh, Top Gear, they had, like, a, a podcast type of thing, right? So, it was an interview, and Christian von Koenigsegg, so the Koenigsegg owner was there. The um, Murray, M- Murray, oh, what do you call him? Gordon Murray was there, too. Yes. Um, Rimax owner, and... The owner of Hennessy yes. was there, and Christian von Koenigsegg, who is, I think, well, if supercar is there, probably my favorite one. Koenigsegg, so, right? Yeah, he's like, I my son's on the JDM stuff. <laughs> that's savage. Like, that's so cool. <laughs> you no, know, he's, you know, I'm driving about in a Tesla all the time. You know, as a daily car, and he's, you know, driving about like late eighties. You know, as JDM you cars, as you should. He's one. He, you know, he might as well be Irish. <laughs> Fit right in. Just get that man, the king of the cone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's a couple of interesting things I uh, pulled this week. Um, what about yourself? Um, one thing that stood out to me was I don't know about anybody, but probably what the nicest sounding engine engines you can get. Red. Where are you going with us? Rotaries. Adam L said rotary swap Supra. Oh, is savage. fucking deadly. That's class. It is unreal. Unbelievable. And there's even the you know TikToks of like RX sevens, you know, with maybe three, four rotors on them. Oh, like I don't think they make that much power. I think he was saying that's like say six fifty, seven fifty, right? I yeah, can't, can't just make. just a little bit. Yeah, yeah just a small. Yeah, you know, he was power. expecting more. He was expecting more, but that sounds unreal. And to be fair, to be fair, out of all the new cars that is out. A car I'd love to own someday would be a Mark V Supra with a Street Hunter spoiler 
and uh, like you never have the money to wide body it, but like it on a set of nice wheels and like a lap kit on it, they are nice. They've 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 grown on me a lot. Like they are really nice. When they first come out, I was like, "What are you doing?" <sighs> like I think it was a love it or hate it kind of thing, or maybe I just was an odd one. I'm not gonna say I hate it, but or just, even the new GR86 is a really nice looking car. I think. Yeah, they are. I just wish. I don't we, like the boxer sound though. I just wish we. Yeah, like they sh- it should be like a 1.6 turbo engine. Or even it should be the engine out of like the Yaris and the Corolla, like the one point three or the one point six, one point six three cylinder, yeah, which are a savage engine as well, unbelievable. Like in they're my pushing six hundred brake out of them um, on standard internals, and in, no, with I think maybe a couple of things done to them in Australia. With. Jesus, but like in my, I think Toyota were like, yeah, we could have done that, but we wanted to have like naturally aspirated power because it's kind of the same as like in the Supra. No, in the, the, in, in the GR86 because like that's what you know the old A86 had. But yeah, they're two point two boxer now or two point four two point boxer. four boxer. Yeah, but in my head, then you could have went with something like a newer version of the beams or something. Like I don't know if beams. If it was if you were fit to uh, emissions and all the beams would have been the perfect. Engine yeah, for like that car. instead of like instead of, like so I don't know beams are a three SG. I don't know go for a four SG. You tell me, Toyota. But um, <laughs> like to me, like that would have been. A better engine than the boxer. Maybe it's just because I don't like the sound of boxers as much. Um, I think the whole idea of the boxer is like it's got the low down torque. I wouldn't so, have a clue. So it kind of like, it, so like some pulls like, pretty much constantly. Subaru's done nicely. Do sound well. Yeah, but you wouldn't own one. I couldn't own one. No, there wouldn't be the most reliable thing in the world. Yeah, imagine our, our, me our, with a like a Subaru. That'd be a that'd literally be a. Box of parts. supposed to be bulletproof and I've already blown up one. It'd be a box or a parts. Yeah, a lot of parts. Um, well, everybody has their own opinion, but like, you know, between the Evos and Subaru's, well, they're which class. is more reliable. Impressive. No, they do, they do look well. Like, Evos are a ticking time bomb, too. Um, like, Hawkeyes Hawk Hawk are really nice. And to be fair, um, Lennox and his hatchback. I love oh, the hatchback. Oh, class. It, it, they're unreal too. And they were another thing at the start. I was like, new, oh impre- my new God. WRX is like, fuck all squared. Yeah. What were they thinking? It's like the new, um, I suppose another thing is, you know, the new Honda Integra. I really hope whoever designed the new Integra was taken to a dark room and beaten. <laughs> <laughs> we don't condone any of this. <laughs> no, but, but it would have taught him a lesson. Like, how an under God can you put that out and go? I suppose it's like Mitsubishi and the Eclipse is now a crossover. So they hyped the Integra, and the best thing was when they unveiled it, it was like a slow clap. Yeah, like they I just there's a render came out, and it was essentially a DC five and a DC two, what it could look like in a modern way. And I mean, it was a good looking car in the render, and then they came out with a piece of shade. Did you ever see the Escort Cosworth modern render? I think so, uh Unbelievable. In my head, and we're kind of going down another rabbit hole, but in my head, an Escort Cosworth is, or not maybe a Cosworth, but in my head, like, the Escort is something that I would love to see brought back in the form of, like, so you've got your focus. Yes. Something that would compete with the likes of an MX-5. Because I don't think Ford owned Mazda anymore. I have no idea. I didn't even so know they did own Mazda like, at a stage. You'd use like the same engine as like say a Fiesta ST or something, and you'd have like this little turbocharged like coupe. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I would. Do you want to be a competitor for really? It would be like the G G R eighty six. Oh, totally. Now, whether yeah. market research conducts that that actually is a good seller or not, I don't know. But that's what I always kind of thought was well the likes of uh, Audi Audi whatever way you want to pronounce it I pronounce it Audi Audi TT I'm sure they're phasing them out now you don't, yeah. they don't make an Audi TT anymore yeah that's right actually um, so maybe the whole sports car thing is sort of dying just can't afford new cars anymore true like a new Golf is like 30 grand that's insane when my brother got a Mark IV like relatively new I think it was a brand new car at the time maybe not maybe a couple of miles on it I think it was like twelve, thirteen thousand. Sure, yeah. Now, That's inflation calculator probably means that twelve thousand is probably twenty-one thousand in today's money. Couldn't be as much as that. I uh, probably would be. Yeah, uh, fifteen years ago, likely. Maybe then. Maybe. I don't know, well, uh, you'd have to run the numbers, but I know, like in recent times, inflation is like whoosh. It's insane. 
Fair enough, fair enough. Um, but uh, I suppose one other thing I've seen this week too. Well, it was kind of last week. Well, we only do this once every two weeks, so. God, the P100. She'll never race one. She'll never beat one the race, but by God, she'll pull it. <laughs> so we were jacks um, on Sunday past there. Uh, what date's today? 14th, so this would mean what, the 12th? 11th? 12th, yeah. 12th. And um, Jack's currently getting a few things done to the skyline, and we were trying to move it about the shed. We couldn't move under the engine power, so we had to sort of... We uh, decided to try and pull up with a P100. It worked. It did work, but I feel we like... We nearly got carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah. There's, we have a video of it, we'll stick it Oh, here. well, just a photo. Not a video, well. sorry, a photo of it, we'll, we'll stick the photo here, but... um. <laughs> I wish we'd I wish we'd got a better photo to be honest, but I think we we're trying to help rather than take photos. <laughs> yes. Um so we were politely told to put the thing phone away. Yeah. The fucking phone away and just help. And I was like Yeah. Good enough, Jack. <laughs> um hint taken. And uh so that's right, yeah. To be honest, that thing in the shed would give you serious diesel poisoning like you just you just get sickened. I know I've seen me in here like with the with the door open and like because it's so long um, backing it out of here you can drive it in the very best but backing it out of here is a mission in itself so what I do is I put the jack below it and like trail it <laughs> to get it lined up to get it out and like I'm literally heaving as I'm putting like the jack in below it and it's like <laughs> because it's so it's just but it works <sighs> well Half the time. It's getting harder to start at the moment. Um, Injectors away or something? I, yeah, injector number four was never right in her, and I think the fuel pump's maybe starting to... Starting to go. Uh, so, um, but she's served you well for so far. Aye, but she would need to. Put a right bit of money through her. Like, oh, true, aye, yeah, true. Um, I have a feeling now she's probably going to go back there again whenever this one comes off. So, uh, we'll see. Well, that's the Bora needs to go there first. Have a wheel burn. That sounds like my wheel's about to fall off. Like, you need to get that sorted out there. Yeah, it's really bad. Like, it's like a proper noise, and I'm just like, turns radio up. <laughs> <laughs> like, dailies, so you're just like, whatever. Um, So, that's that's the crack with that. But have you uh, any shout outs this week? Because we've had a couple of. Now, now, as times went on, and I know we're sort of only in episode five, and we're not trying to get ahead of ourselves here, but do you get the odd person that writes to us and says here fair play like really really happy you've, to hear you've this looking forward to the next episode so who have you got Connor? So uh, I was asked um, to give a shout out to a fellow Sierra man good Sierra man um, I've been told he might never drive this thing right he's done too good a job to it ah yes one well, of them boys right but uh, well it's time Tony McCarthy was very good, good at listening Tony to McCarthy. us <laughs> so, um, give we shout it to him. His car was Wally as well. I know it meant so, to be a savage job, like to it, and nah. I've seen uh, RMA done an exhaust and nah. manifold and all on it. But I think he's brave length of time at it too, and spent a brave few pounds on it. I suppose you know, oh, it's easy done. You'd want you wouldn't want to you know dirty the car. No, why? Why would you? Why would you go all to that? You know, it'd be nice if he would drive it down here, and you know, we compare you know compare the two. You know how to I respect really neatly and all and properly do a Sierra then how to bastardise it like like Michael has fuck one up yeah I well it'd be nice to see the two of them together to be fair but actually that's led me in quite nicely because the boy I want to give a shout out to is also a Sierra man actually he's uh do you remember from LZ Fest the Mark 1 RS Focus tell you just um, has like big AP brakes Turbocharged, I uh, blue, I uh, on uh, semi slicks or not semi slicks, or it might be semi slicks actually. I probably noticed Al Downs. Uh, no, not to say like I probably did notice it, but unreal, deadly clean car. Man's a complete Ford nut. He's kind of just like my idol, but he also has a um, Magenta four before Cosworth. Oh, and it's as clean as you like. Like it's class. Um. So we were chatting there the other day, and he was saying he was like, "It'd be nice to get the two cars together, and we've come up with the the purest dream and a purest nightmare." 
<laughs> so hers is obviously gone. It's got like a common mode of wheels. Oh uh, yes, like everything's like T T thirty four turbo. You like, can nearly do pure spec Irish spec. <laughs> aye, and then just the child nobody wanted. <laughs> and uh, but yes, yeah, so that's where so Michael spec. He's uh he's wanting so we, one of his mates who does a few videos and stuff. Uh, we've arranged uh, maybe someday over the summer to get a night down there and oh, get a right, few yes. photos and a few videos done. Oh, deadly, so I'm looking deadly. forward to that. So if it makes it, if the car makes it. So uh, oh, his, his is it. like ultra clean, mega clean, really like clean example. So no, that'll be good. So, but um, we've talked a lot. We have, yes. So. Uh, just a wee quick update. So my farming adventures. Oh God, yes. Um, more cows have calved. More cows have calved. How many is that now? Uh, <sighs> there could be. He doesn't even know. Five or six his last couple of days. Oh, fucking hell. Uh, to be fair, it wasn't helping that I had a, uh, you know, a euro in a wee holiday. Yes. Uh, well, now going in a, in a in another a, holiday. In another wee holiday. Yes. Um, Good to yourself. Well, you have to Public you have to treat yourself. You get about five million holidays a year anyway. So you would too. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you. You wish I would if I was a public sector worker. I would absolutely, but unfortunately um, not. So, but no, uh, a lot of cows, Calvin. Um, I feel like a suckler farmer at this stage. There still is the milk cows, so so you, it's very busy. Very ah, busy. I um, that already. Surrey's all out now. Ah, I think. I'm sort of wondering that about the men that put out Surrey now with the with the freeze. You See, know? before we would have been a lot later. But like as I said in another podcast before, um, we had to put a bit out like as soon as the band left just it, because of just because of, like stories not there and like new parlor all that carry on use loads of water. But um, maybe we talk a bit more about it in another podcast. For we've talked a lot of shit. Um, oh, actually, oh, just to add again. Oh, okay. Seen a really nice TikTok about lorry. You know lorries. Did you see the one where it was the four lorries and the one? one side of the motorway and one was in the hard shoulder and the three in the other and they took up the whole motorway right Why? see not I don't know I suppose, suppose they thought it was cool and I thought it was cool too <laughs> <laughs> what were they were they Volvo Scanians or Scanians deadly I could be wrong in saying that but I've seen a couple of Scanians on it so probably somebody will keep me right for that but they, they looked really well all done Dutch spec I think my big grill yards and stuff on them all uh, yeah deadly probably need to shape up with our knowledge a bit and probably pull together a main topic on the rise at some point yeah well we'll talk about it for a while but eventually we'll do it I have actually no idea what we're going to even do for the next podcast but that sounds like next podcast problem so in the meantime that's not our problem right now <laughs> we're going to head on um, yes. thank you very much for listening to the podcast if you've made it this far and dabbled through all the bullshit that we seem to get through every episode but it's all appreciated um, we're now well, we're, I was going to say we're now on TikTok, but we've uh, probably going to try and push TikTok a bit more. It seems so, to be working quite well for us. So between TikTok, uh, YouTube, and Spotify, all the limited slip differences podcast. Don't be uh, afraid to give us a message if you, there's something you want us to talk shit about. Um, yeah, we're open to pretty much anything at this point. Yes. Well, within reason. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you want us to talk about something or you have a story yourself, don't be afraid to let us know about it. And we'll discuss it, chat about it, give our own opinion on it. Um, yeah, and just uh, in general, uh, have a bit of crack with it. Yeah, so um, we're at Limited Slip Differences on Instagram and TikTok. Every, everything, yeah. And everything, yeah. So, yeah, tell your friends, tell your parents, tell your families, tell your co-workers. If, tell your cats. Tell your cats, like Mountains, who invaded us earlier. Or tell your cows. Let them listen to it while you're yes. milking the cows play it, in the play morning. It, play it while you're when you're milking the cows. Um, and on that note, going to wrap this up. So yeah. I am Michael Scone. You can follow me if you care on my Insta and TikTok at Michael Scone underscore. And, and you are. I am Connor McGowan, and I am Connor dot McGow on everything. So yeah, Instagram. Thanks TikTok. very much, guys. So have a good you. one. See you later. Best of luck. All the best.